Hello and welcome back to the Iron Man. So we're doing it. We are making our first Augmentor that I'm going to install on a Sunspear. Expect this to happen many, many times in the future. And uh, we're augmenting our Sunspear and this is just going to be our Slayer weapon, probably in perpetuity or at least until we don't want to train invention anymore. Um, but yeah, I expect to get this thing up to level 10 and disassemble it many, many times. Okay, we're now a couple of Slayer tasks into it, and I've made some progress on finishing off this Augmented Sun Spear. Haven't quite got it to level 10, probably would need to do a couple more Slayer tasks to do that, but I think it's time that we take a break and we start working towards ROTM. As I mentioned last episode, this is kind of the main goal I want to aim for in this episode. And there's a couple reasons for that. It will finish off all the extra stuff for World Wake, so I'll get the ring and I'll get automatons and all that. Yada yada, you've all seen this before, but there are a couple of pieces of new content that are like kind of related to ROTM as well. Um, first of all, now you can make Abyssal Bane, Dragon Bane, and Revenant Bane weapons. Um, you do need, I think, two Draconic Visages to make the 2H Sword, two Abyssal Whips to make the uh, Abyssal 2H Sword. So yeah, I do want to make these. They're supposed to be really, really good against dragons and Abyssal creatures, respectively. And with all the new Abyssal creatures added to Slayer, um, I'm probably going to want these weapons. And then also, the other thing is that you can kill the Arc Glacor for Slayer tasks, and it gives about 5k Slayer XP per kill. I don't know how that scales with like how many mechanics you have enabled because obviously the more mechanics you have enabled the more HP it has and typically Slayer XP is related to how much HP a monster has so I'm not really sure how that works this might be a minimum this might be a maximum but uh, I want to be able to get some Glacor Slayer tasks and then I want to kill Arc Glacor with a Slayer Helm bonus and all that sick Slayer XP too. So near the end of the last video, I did throw out like the really brief question, hey, uh, I need more money. What's a decent way that I could make money via some sort of like fun PVM method? And pretty much everyone that responded said, don't do that, just do more tree. So here I am doing yet another tree. Now, is that a good decision, you may ask? Was Is this the, the way that we should continue to make money? Well, let's pop up in all of these. Um, funnily enough, this is actually like by far the worst elite wild event I've ever had just for straight cash. Three tiny Necrodium Salvage, so only 300k. The Medium Reward Casket had a fortunate component at least, so yeah, cheers for that. Okay, so our luck with the tree isn't the greatest. Let's see what we can do with the uh, the star instead. Had to teleport out of there because I didn't realize I had like a wild creature attacking me. Uh, not a bad start, decent amount of Alks, and for our special bag we got 650k. That's a decent amount of cash, I don't think I've ever seen a cash drop that big from wild events. Okay, so I was just AFK fishing doing my thing last night, and I must have not realized it from being so AFK, but opened up my bank this morning and I found we got a little Bubbles pet right at the, the very front of the bank. So I regret to inform you, I have no idea when I actually received it. At some point yesterday, when I AFK, I, I go pretty hard. Um, but yeah, that's our second skilling pet. So we now have fishing and divination. Okay, we just hit level 10 on our fishing rod matic First one, hopefully the first of many. I'm actually, I don't remember how much XP you get for disassembling a level 10 item, but we're about to find out. It looks like we're going to get 459k invention XP, that's sizable, and that's going to get us all the way up to level 38. So we hit level 30 in all skills, and we're getting pretty close to level 40 in all skills as well. Okay, the first step in the uh, path towards ROTM out of the quest I still need to do is Anakra's Lament, I'm just finishing that up now. I always did appreciate how they redid this cutscene with the new Majorat models after um, ROTM came out. It was a nice touch. And there we go. Kind of an unspectacular award, although um, the Camulet isn't entirely useless because I'm still at a summoning level where um, making granite lobsters is probably a useful thing to do with my Crimson Charms, and this is the best way to, like, go mine granite and bank it. Next quest that we have to do is, of course, the Slug Menace. A very imposing boss fight here. Let's just quickly demolish this thing. Every quest you do with Sir Tiffy now is really awkward because the first option, if you hover over his, like, character here, is actually to sit on the bench, so you just kind of take a seat on his lap uh, instead of talking to him. But anyway, I just finished up the Slug Menace. This quest back in the day used to be, like, priority numero uno before you really started Slayer because Proslet armor was, like, the Slayer gear. It's just funny because on my old school account, man, I, like, rushed doing this quest as fast as possible, and it's just, like, the opposite in RS3. Okay, it's time to cash in here for a big milestone level. I've been uh, still working away on Herblore every single day. Let's get ourselves 20k XP. 
Oh, I was really expecting that would be enough. <laughs> We're 800 XP off, but that's okay, because I also have an Herblore Daily Challenge. I can cash that in. And we are up to level 95 Herblore, tied for my highest skill now, along with Prayer. I didn't realize that you got an XP boost from Herbie Werby. That's, uh, that's pretty nice. But the main thing that's nice about 95 Herblore is now you can just boost four overloads with Green Man's Ale. Don't have to worry about spicy stews anymore. Okay, yes, I did just complete Fight Arena. Why did it take me so long? I don't know. I guess I forgot. But that was the last quest that we needed. And would you look at that? ROTM is ready to start. I think there used to be a quest point requirement. You needed like 275 or something before you can start the quest. Um, I mean, we're almost there anyway, but I think that was like removed at some point. So now you can just start it once you have the prereqs done. The one other thing I love about ROTM is the most frustrating puzzle is at the very start of the quest. So manage to get through that. It should be smooth sailing from now on. Okay, I think after I touch the Stone of Jazz, I do officially begin the final fight, so yeah, here we go. The final boss fight of our RTM, of course, isn't the most challenging thing in the world, but it does take a really long time, so I'll be back in like half an hour or so, I guess. Okay, all done with ROTM. Cool, so a uh, pretty decent XP drop from this quest, and all the other rewards that go along with it. Um, I think we unlock a grand total of three new Slayer tasks. It's of course Glacors, Rune Dragons, and automatons, and out of those, I'm, I'm definitely the most excited for Glacors. I decided to use the XP lamps on smithing just because this is kind of the next uh, goal that I want to go for, is getting 90 smithing, and I still have quite a bit of mining and smithing to do, so this will just help speed up that process a little bit faster, so yeah, 85 smithing there. Okay, I'm going to unlock a couple of tasks here. I'm definitely going to unlock Muzpa just because they are pretty good XP using ancient magics, um, especially just like at the point of the account that I'm at. I'm also unlocking gla Glacors, of course, and these will be done at Arc Glacor. And then down here we have Nightmare Creatures. Um, I don't know if they're necessarily a good task for GP or XP or anything like that, but they do drop the Nightmare Gauntlets, which are going to be um, a pretty decent ranged upgrade for us. So I do want to finish up this quest, Children of Ma, and then start doing Nightmare Creatures as well. Okay, that didn't take long. Our very next task was Abbey Demons. I guess it's time to make ourselves an Abyssal Bane 2H Sword. So I kind of realized halfway through smithing this Bane 2H Sword that you actually need two Abyssal Whips to turn it into an Abyssal Bane 2H Sword. Um, I only have one at the moment, so I'm going to just finish smithing it anyway, use it for the task, and I hope we get a second whip during the task. And if that happens, I'll turn it into an Abyssal Bane 2H and try it out. Okay, I just hit level 10 of my Sun Spear for the first time, and I only have 40 Gargoyles left, and I know that's not a whole lot, but I'm not going to waste any Invention XP. I'm actually going to go disassemble this and get a new Sun Spear. I was really close to Ivan anyway, so I decided to just pop over here. Let's disassemble the Sun Spear. Uh, 523k Invention XP, not bad. Gets us up to level 43. Are there any significant things we unlock? We can make a Spring Cleaner now. I'm not sure how much the upkeep is on the spring cleaner, but I uh, might look into that. All right, and 600k gone. But with all the Abbey Demon and Gargoyle tasks I've been getting lately, money has become a lot easier to come by. Okay, I was just checking out the cost to make a spring cleaner. I have most of the parts already. I just need some more simple parts, which I need a, a bunch more of them anyway, so I'm going to disassemble probably like a bunch of maple logs for that. Um, but the tight springs, all you need for them is subtle components which you can get by disassembling scimitars. So I might add in the Alcarid scimitar shop to my little run when I go around to collect base parts, along with the Verox sword shop. And over time, build up some subtle components and we'll get that spring cleaner. Oh, another cool little thing we achieved is I made another fishing outfit piece and I now have the full shark set. Okay, there it is, first Glacier task. And it does cost a Slayer token to get it. Um, 68 Glacers, though, I think it's worth it because I've never done a Glacier task before. So, yeah, I'm planning on doing this whole thing in Dark Glacier. We will see how I hold up, but uh, that is the plan for now. Okay, I was excited to just jump into Arc Glacier and start doing my task, but unfortunately there's something I have to do first, and that is we need to unlock this ring. This is the Pontifex Shadow Ring. I have to do, I think, just one quest, maybe a couple of quests, before I can craft this. But basically what the Pontifex Shadow Ring does is it allows you to get Elder Troves as a drop um, from doing stuff in Sentisten, and that includes killing the Arc Glacier. And I want to get these Elder Troves because... Uh, most of the drops from them aren't that exciting, but you can get an Onyx from Elder Troves, and they're not terribly rare, and I currently don't really have any other good sources for an Onyx at the moment, and I'm going to need them before too long, so uh, I do want to get these Elder Troves unlocked. 
Okay, so it turns out before I can even start the two quests that I need to do, um, I need to do this entire mini quest archaeology mystery type thing called the Vault of Shadows, and I needed a whole bunch of pylon batteries for that. So I'm completing the Zerosian 1 collection three separate times because I needed a total of 80 pylon batteries, and this is kind of the fastest way to do it. But I got a lot of chronauts out of it, and I got, well, not a lot of archaeology XP because this is uh, pretty low level stuff, but at least some XP in archaeology at least. Okay, sweet. I guess that was it. There is no pop-up completion screen or anything, but I just got the chat bar message that I completed the mystery, Vault of Shadows. Um, actually, technically a mini-quest, I guess. Uh, not really much of a mini-quest since it took longer than most of the quests I've done have. Oh, I forgot to mention the reward. So, the reward for doing this mini-quest is a whole bunch of archaeological materials. All these are pretty nice to have. And then you also get these buttons that you can press and you can kind of move around the dig site. I guess I just moved to the same spot, but yeah, you can go between like four spots around the dig site, so it makes transportation a little bit easier. Okay, finally managed to catch another elite wild event. Let's just quickly check out what we got. Oh, Dragon Rider Gloves. You are too kind. And then a couple of medium plated salvage. Don't worry, I didn't forget about the clue casket. Let's open that up as well. Oh, that's pretty bad. After a reroll, got a bit better. Black Helm H5, that's a fortunate. Okay, we just finished up Azandra's quest. Finally, that was a long one. It was pretty interesting though. I enjoyed doing it. So part of this quest enables me to upgrade the Pontifex ring, but I have to do one more quest, City of Sentiston, before we can upgrade it all the way to the version we actually want. Also, I'm making a quick stop in at Maze Caravan to claim my 250 and 275 quest point rewards because I, eh, I forgot to get the one last time. So I think each of these should give 500k cash. Oh, a mill cash. And then also two fortunate commandants. Well, gosh dang it, I missed, missed the fireworks, but we just hit 74 archaeology, which is a goal I've been working on because that's what I needed to do, the City of Sentiston quest, which is what we're going to work on next. Okay, I'm starting City of Sentiston. We're back at the point where some of these quests now involve combat. I haven't really had to do any combat in a while, and these are newer quests, so um, I'm imagining boss fights will actually have a difficulty that's more scaled for the modern game, so I'm a little bit more nervous about doing these ones. I will say, though, this is the second phase in the quest chain that goes into, I think, Extinction is the next quest, um, and then Twilight of the Gods, and that's kind of like, you know, the latest big, huge quest chain that has, like, massive lore implications and pretty gr sweet rewards at the end of it, too, so I'm excited to keep going on this thing. Okay, it took me until today, I must admit, to realize that this dude's name is not Azandra, as I've been saying for probably years at this point. It's Azanadra, so, yeah, I apologize for that. I probably said it's Andrew multiple times already, and I'm sure at least one of you has already commented about it, but uh, yeah, I got it. I figured it out. Okay, I've collected the last ward, and I'm just handing that in, and that should do it for this quest. Okay, there it is. Probably the main reason most people complete this quest is for the four new ancient magic spells that you get unlocked, the main one being the most useful one, PPM-wise, being, uh, of course, Animate Dead. Um, and I'm not actually sure what the other three spells do. I'll have to check that out. But the reason I did this quest is now we can make ourselves a Pontifex Shadow Ring. Okay, making this ring is going to be a three-step process. The first step is just the Observation Ring. This is kind of the basic one. I don't think it does a whole lot that's all that exciting. The more exciting one is the Shadow Ring, because of course that improves our drops that we're going to be getting from Arclesaur and from Croesus, because we'll be able to get these Troves now. So with just the base ring, you can only get the tier one troves, which aren't super great, and you can only get, I think, like five five of them per hour max. Um, but since we've already done <laughs> some boss fighting, at least uh, the Glacor and Croesus, we can charge our ring all the way up to the second upgrade tier, which basically means where you can get higher tier troves um, and we can get more of them per hour. So these are all the benefits. I'm not gonna go through all of them individually, but it does a whole lot of stuff that is good for us. It is finally time to begin camping Arclaysaur with the Slayer Helm bonus. I've been trying to do a lot of research and just figure out like what exactly it does if you enable one mechanic, but I think it does do enough of a drop rate increase and a drop quantity increase that it's worth just one. So I'm going to do the flurry mechanic, um, see how it goes. It does make kills slower, but as far as I can tell, the drops that you get just from turning on one mechanic versus having zero mechanics do in fact make it worth it. So all the flurry mechanic does is it makes the arc laser occasionally use range attacks as well as magic attacks. Um, but it seems like I'm kind of just out healing that anyway with soul split. So I don't think I really care. 
And also the added bonus is with the flurry mechanic on, uh, the kind of like ice storm that creeps up on you from either side doesn't make it all the way to the middle, so it doesn't bounce you back and forth like it does if you're on zero mechanic. So this might actually just be, you know, like a quality of life improvement. That's not bad. And our very first kill we get an Elder Trove. I'm not sure how common they are, but uh, I will just save all these up and open them at the end. Well, we're a little over halfway through the task. Just got my first loot beam troll, just an elite clue. The drops that we are looking out here for, I guess an F you can also get an effigy, which would also be a loot beam troll, but the main things that we're looking out for are the dark nylas, which are used to craft the weapons, um, and then I guess a scripture of when, which is kind of like the, the book that you can equip and it gives you bonuses, and uncut onyx. All the other specific drops for our glacier, I think, are unique to hard mode, so we wouldn't be able to get them. Okay, that was kill number 68. First task at our glacier is now done. This is not all the loot. I had to make a couple different trips in order to get everything. So I'm going to go pull out all the loot that I got and uh, we'll take a look. Okay, so this is the full loot. I think we got everything. I do have 17 Elder Troves. I will open those up next. But uh, the first thing I wanted to do is just look at the Alcabals um, because I do I do still care a lot about making GP. Um, so these are all the Alcabals. And then, so that's about a mil. Um, but then also the uncut Dragonstones. They don't alk for much on their own, but you can turn those into Dragonstone bracelets. Um, and those alk for like 10k each. And then plus 15 more from the Crystal Keys. So we have another 800k there. So about 2 mil in alks. Not bad. The charms, pretty darn good. And let's Go ahead and open up these Elder Troves. Hopefully I'll get lucky and get an Onyx. Okay, I'll start opening up these Troves, see if we get anything good. A lot of the drops that you get out of them are like pretty solid, even if you don't get anything uh, too impressive. Okay, that was the last one. Uh, 100k cash, decent amount of like just good overall crafting materials, but um, nothing that should blow us away here. I am over halfway to an Onyx and Onyx Dust. I have 61, but unfortunately you need 97 Divination to actually make the Onyx when you have 100 Onyx Dusts. And we're currently at 81, so I'm kind of a long way away from making that happen. Okay, I just got another task from Wolverine, and it's Avion Z, so that means the next thing I'm going to be doing is some more Criara. But I'm not going to be doing that in this episode because we're done with this one. So I'll, next episode I'll start off with some Criara, I guess. Uh, the only other thing that I necessarily wanted to really have planned for the next episode is I do want to finish up the Children of Ma quest and get us some Nightmare Gauntlets, but aside from that, I am open to suggestions on things that would be good to work towards in the next episode. I know a lot of Iron Man at my stage start to camp Krosis to try to get the Mage Armor, and then they do like a ton of Hellier to try to get the Dual Wield Mage. Um, and then they go for the greater con concentrated blast ability from Carapac. So um, that's the route a lot of other people take. That could be the route I take as well. But yeah, like I said, I'm open to suggestions as well. But that's going to do it for me this time. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a great week.